Good morning, everybody. On this topic, I will talk about diabetic nephropathy and both some skills and some explanation. Hopefully, you will enjoy this presentation. Uh, the first question, which of the following side effect is most likely with the use of metformin? Lactic acidosis, renal failure, diarrhea, skin rash, headache. So please, some seconds, you'll think about the correct answer. Uh, the answer is diarrhea, as you know, metformin, the com most likely side effect of metformin is gastric abscess. Uh, second question, at which level of kidney function metformin should be stopped as a treatment for type 2 diabetes? Creatinine more than 1.5 mg per deciliter or creatinine more than 2 mg per deciliter or um, EGFR less than 60 ml per minute or EGFR less than 45 ml or GFR less than 35 ml per minute. So the correct answer here is E. Uh, when GFR is less than 35 ml, we have to uh, stop metformin. Uh, next question, increasing dabagliflozin dose for our patient could cause all of the following except increase in body weight, increase in polyuria, increase risk of urinary tract infection, decrease in blood pressure, decrease in HbA1c. So if you note here that except in the question, uh, so it, it, it does not increase the body weight rather than it have some, you know, losing uh, weight for the patients, it does, yes, increase polyuria, and uh, it has a risk also for urinary tract infection in some patients. Uh, it has a benefit in decreasing blood pressure and also decreasing HbA1c. So the fourth question, which of the following is a serious side effect of the SGLT2 inhibitors? Um, a, hypoglycemia or normoglycemic DKA, leg swelling, heart failure. So what do you think the correct answer, which is the serious side effect? Um, the serious side effect of uh, these groups is normoglycemic DKA. Question number five, which of the following is the effect of cetagliptine? A for lowering fasting glucose level, suppressing glucagon secre secretion after meal, improving insulin resistance at the liver, increase amount of glucose in the urine, decrease body weight through appetite suppression. So the correct answer here, you know, at all DBP4 inhibitors uh, work in suppression glucagon secretion after uh, the meal. In this slide, I will talk about prevalence of end-stage renal disease uh, by primary cause over time. As we see here, uh, from 1996 uh, till th uh, 2013, um, there is increase in the prevalence of end-stage renal disease. You can see that diabetes uh, is the primary cause. As you can see here, the cystic kidney disease, hypertension, and glomerulonephritis um, all cause slowly increase, uh, not as much as diabetes. Uh, next slide, um, show about proportion of diabetic patients with renal impairment. Um, you can see from 1998, 1988 uh, till 1994 and 1999 till uh, 2004 and 2005 till 2008 uh, there is decrease um, number of people 
with detectable nephropathy. As you can see, as 37% of patients had some sign of nephropathy. Um, albuminuria reduced GFR and albumin. Uh, you also reduced GFR and m over time make some progression of finally about 37, uh, 34, sorry, 34 percent. Uh, it's a small progress, but uh, it's a progress, you know, rather really with some active measures, we could uh, actually decrease the prevalence of renal uh, failure. And this slide of CKD um, show the prevalence of CKD in di diagnosed diabetes. Uh, as we see here, about 60% uh, has no kidney disease, and stage 1 about 10.4%, stage 2 about 13.4%, and stage 3 about 14%, and stage 4 uh, just less about 1.1%. As you know, here uh, show the stages um, of uh, kidney disease by GFR, you know, and stage one with GFR shows more than 90 um, um, kidney damage with normal or increased GFR. Um, stage two show about kidney damage with mild decrease in GFR. Uh, between 60 and 89, and moderate G decrease GFR in stage 3, um, with GFR between 30 to 59. Uh, stage 4, uh, severe decrease in GFR about 15 to 29. And then um, stage 5, which is in the stage renal disease, uh, with GFR less than uh, 15. Percent or dialyzed. In this slide talk, I'll talk about diabetic nephropathy. As you know, diabetic nephropathy is the most common cause of end-stage renal disease. Uh, the percentage of patients with end-stage renal disease who have diabetes mellitus, especially type 2, um, patients have increased over uh, the past decade. The incidence of diabetes mellitus is rising worldwide, and it's estimated that 20 to 40 percent of all diabetic patients will develop um, diabetic nephropathy. The usual course um, of diabetic nephropathy, um, initially in the first stage, um, we do have increased GFR, as you see here. Um, then the GFR normalized and stay stable with long time. Um, we call this uh, as a preclinical phase. And uh, then in one point, we will start to have mild proteinuria. And as presence of op suboptimal control, which results in temporary microalbuminuria, um, which eventually become permanent, and um, uh, an increasing proteinuria. Once we have uh, this, we have steady, you know, decreasing in GFR. Uh, leading to end stage renal disease over decades of the disease development. Next, the pathophysiology of diabetic nephropathy. The basic pathophysiology of diabetic, uh, diabetic nephropathy is similar, but not the same in both type 1 and type 2 patient, uh, diabetes patient. The comorbidities, hypertension, obesity, and dyslipidemia, arterial sclerosis, but more injury to the kidney, forming a complex pattern of nephropathy. 
There are strong genetic determinants in the risk of nephropathy, about 40 to 50 percent of patients with type 1 or type 2 diabetes will eventually develop nephropathy. And this slide uh, show about pathophysiology, uh, which has two paths, like you know, hemodynamic pathways and metabolic pathways. Um, hemodynamic pathways like high pressure, uh, activation of renin, angiotensin, and aldosterone uh, system, and VEGFF, TGF, um, beta, and endothelin. And in the metal and metabolic pathway, uh, hyperglycemia, age, BKC pathway, um, polyol pathway, oxidative stress, both leading to intracellular um, signaling molecules and increased ROS, um, led to activation, uh, growth factors, and cytokines. DGF, VEGF, interleukin 1, 4, and 18, TNF, um, which led to, you know, accumulation of extra cellular matrix, matrix and um, thickening of glomerular basement membrane, uh, and led to sclerosis, and, and with diabetic kidney disease. And how diabetic nephropathy present? Actually, clin clinically, we can get clinically and path pathology also. And, uh, clinically, you can see persistent proteinuria, hypertension, progressive decline in renal function, and path pathology, uh, and you can get it by diabetic micro, angiopathy, increase of basement membrane, material diffuse glomerular sclerosis, diffuse in increase uh, and mesangial matrix and thickening of the capillary walls, and nodular glomerulosclerosis, uh, uh, insudative lesions, hyalinosis, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, atubular glomeruli, diffuse liner reaction for IgG, and uh, along with basement membrane. How to diagnose and screen? Uh, serum creatinine based in EGFR. Also can do albuminuria. It's, uh, you know, uh, by two-way spot urine albumin creatinine ratio and 24 hours urine collection. Um, albuminuria is a, considered as a sensitive marker of chronic kidney disease and cardiovascular disease risk and is used as a first clinical indicator of diabetic kidney disease. Measuring the quantity of albumin in uh, 24 hours urine collection has been considered the golden standard for the diagnosis of diabetic nephropathy. However, collection of 24 hours urine sample is difficult in routine practice. So I'll go here for albumin creatinine ratio. <clears throat> the guidelines recommend uh, the use of albumin to creatinine ratio as a spot urine sample as surrogate for, for the amount of urinary albumin in 24 hours urine collection. Simultaneously, you no know, measurement of albumin and creatinine allows normalization of this value over, overcomes the variability caused by hydration. It's accepted widely as a valid marker of the presence of albuminuria and very good screening test. Um, the classification, you know, KDECO classification of uh, CKD, you know, uh, A1, normal to mildly increase in albuminuria is defined as uh, less than 30 uh, milligram per gram creatinine. And this is how to assess the albuminuria. Um, A2 moderately increase in albuminuria is defined as a 30 to 300 milligram uh, per gram creatinine, uh, which was previously called um, termed as microalbuminuria. A3 individuals with urine uh, 
SER greater than 300 mg per gram are categorized as having severely increased albuminuria, which was termed, you know, before as a macro albuminuria. At the end, I'd like to thank you for watching and listening. And please, if any comment, uh, just write down. Thank you.